Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today we have very special guests who have an innovative way for reaching children. Brother Jaco and Karen Hugo, thank you for being with me today. Thank you, thank sir. You, sir. So tell me about how you're reaching children for Jesus. Wow, where do I start? Um, so about 14 years ago, we started visiting schools in Africa and we realized how open the schools are. Um, I went to a crusade and I told her to visit some schools up the road and maybe you can explain that better. And um, I came back six weeks later and she visited many schools and we were surprised how open the schools are to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we found various ways to actually access the schools. Initially, we visit three schools a day, and then we found it's actually very easy. So eventually we ended up visiting seven schools a day uh, in Nairobi. And we could not believe how easy it is and how open the schools are to the gospel. And so we just went from school to school, week in, week out. And yeah, that is it. I don't know what else you wanted me to say with that. And so now how many schools have you visited over the past years that you've been doing this? Yeah, I believe it's now just short of 8,000, definitely yeah. well over 7,000. We kind of stopped counting about two years ago when we started helping CFAM with schools, but well over 7,000 schools, and we've literally seen millions of children coming into the kingdom of God. So we're very happy with that. Let's talk about why it's so important to reach the children. Sometimes people think we're going to reach the adults and the only salvations that they really count is the adults. They don't count all the little children that are mm -hmm. running around. But why do you think it's important to reach children with the gospel? Well, first, I think that's really where the market is. Um, like, uh, you know, they, we talk about the t um, 1040 window. They, when it comes to salvation, they talk about the 440 window. It's really between the age of 4 and 14, 70% of the people in the world give their life to Jesus. So that's really where we should be aiming, you know, our crusades. And so often I believe it's important when the child, for, of course, it's easier for the child to make a decision for Jesus Christ because they believe just easier. The child, like faith the Bible talks about, is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we can get the child to Jesus at a younger age, we can actually bend that tree and they can follow God and become and live a much better life glorifying to Him than when maybe when you want to catch them later and try to turn the tree when it's stronger. So I believe the sooner you get the child to fall in love with Jesus and know Jesus and walk and talk with Jesus, you can change his entire life. The way he looks at himself, the way he lives. And I've been watching how you've been training these evangelism boot camp students here at Christ for All Nations, taking them into these African nations and taking them from school to school. And the same results that you've seen you've been seeing these young students have as mm -hmm. they they go into these schools tell me what uh do you, why do you think it's so important for these students to have this experience of of sharing the gospel with these children you know a number of years ago we were starting to pray that people yeah. more people will come to come and share the gospel with the children because it's really it is so so easy and the schools are so so open and so God really opened the door through CFAM. And I believe the, the harvest is plentiful. And the more harvests we can send out to the harvest, the better. Because I, I don't think we can reach them all. It's just yeah. because every five, six years, the school is completely new. And, and so the more people we can train up, who can train more people, who can multiply themselves, I think the chance of reaching the harvest in Africa and the world becomes better and bigger. And this is also uh, something that's easy to do for anybody that starts out a ministry. If you start in schools, it's not expensive. It is um, easy doable with somebody, uh, somebody that you partner up with. And also, if this is maybe a platform where you can start, you streamline your messages, you get confidence and you train yourself on how to do this well to go and take it at a higher level. So let's pretend that we are visiting a school right now and you're standing in front of the children what do you say to lead them down the pathway to salvation? Kind of pretend like right here we have a bunch of kids and, and you are ministering to them. What do you say? Okay, so maybe I'll first give you a bit of an outline. Yeah. Um, we introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's always good to show honor to the teacher and the head teacher that's actually given you the opportunity. Um, then we open up the prayer, invite the Holy Spirit to come to open up their hearts and their minds so they fully understand what God wants to say. And then we tell a story. There are many children's stories. We connect scripture to the story, 
uh, maybe a number of scriptures that you feel God has placed on your heart because that's really opening up them and the Holy Spirit is there and we add and we add scriptures to the story and then we lift up the name of Jesus over and over and over and as we do that the Holy Spirit come and then we give them opportunity to respond and it's amazing how they respond and then we pray a basic prayer of salvation really basic the message must be basic and simple for them to understand and then we explain salvation and then we give them a chance and we also share a short scripture on the Holy Spirit and give them a chance to receive the Holy Spirit. Now I can, you want me to do a, a story? Sure, give me a story. Okay. Then. One day, long, long ago, in a country far, far away, there was a young man that lived with his family. It so happened that his country came into war. The father said to the older brothers, they should go and fight in the war. After some time now, he said to the younger brother that remained behind, you should take some food to your older brothers. They must be hungry now. They packed a big bag of food, lots of rice, meat, banana. The boy walked for a long time. When he got to his brothers, they just sitting around like us. He said, hey, brothers, why are you sitting? Why are you not fighting the enemy? He said, ah, oh, little brother, we have a big problem. The enemy has got a big giant. Nobody wants to fight the giant. They say, if we defeat the giant, we can take their land. But if they defeat our soldier, they will take our land. Nobody wants to fight. But this young man that brought the food, he felt like God is with him. He told his brothers. The brothers told the king. The king said, now if this young man feels like God is with him, he can fight the giant. The boy went, he picked up five rocks. He walked up to the giant. The giant looks down and said, Hey, you little boy, what are you doing here now? You're just nobody. The young man said to the giant, Mr. Giant, today I will defeat you because the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob is with me. The giant is still laughing. He took one rock, put it inside his slingshot. He went, shoo, shoo. He released the rock, the rock flew, hit the giant in front of his head. The giant went down and the boy killed that giant that day with his own sword. Now, what is the name of the giant? Goliath. And the name of the boy? David. Aha. Do, do the children know the names of the... Uh, they yes. know the names. They name. recognize the story. And yes. it is very, they recognize. I've not been to one school where they don't recognize the story. The great thing here is now, you've told an actual riddle in the story that they solve. Now they know they got you and you know you got them. And from there to get to salvation, it doesn't take long. Because so now, then how do you take that into salvation? So I would, for instance, say, you know, the same way that God helped David to defeat Goliath, he wants to help you too. Mm. But why did God help David? David and God were close friends. Yeah. You walked and talked with God all the time. So how do you and I become close friends with God? The Bible says for us to start this relationship with God, we need to be born again to be saved by God, to go to heaven. So how do we get born again? The Bible says there are two things we need to do. Number one, you need to believe in Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, mm -hmm. He died on the cross for you and me, that Jesus rose from the, from the dead, that Jesus is alive today, and He wants to live in your heart. You ask, how many of you believe that? They all hands go up. Secondly, the Bible says you need to repent of your sin. Yeah. What does that mean? You need to ask God to forgive you of the things that you've done that was wrong, like lying to the teacher. Or cheating in the exam, or stealing, or many more, or maybe not forgiving your brother or your sister. And then in forgiveness, you can go much deeper if you want to, if you have the time. But you know, the Bible also says that uh, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, right here, right now. He wants to forgive you. Jesus wants to give you a brand new start today and hope for the future. Are you ready to open the door of your heart to Jesus? Now, yes, which, yes. Of <laughs> Secondly, the Bible says that everyone, say everyone, everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Are you ready to call upon the name of Jesus? Yes. Let's all close our eyes. And then you give them time to respond. And then you do like a basic, simple prayer. I like to pray a basic, simple bunker prayer. And you make sure you pray it in short phrases so it's easy for them to repeat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we have many different stories that we use. And it's really amazing how the children respond. But I do like David and Goliath just because it's not only a story, it's also a riddle. And you really pull them in. And they, as they figure it out, then they start to think, yes. oh, yeah. I know what he's talking Absolutely, about. Absolutely, yeah. And it's yeah. also easy to keep their attention because all the time they're thinking, is it or is it not this? What is he mm -hmm. talking about? So you're keeping their attention all the time because it's just not a story where they're wandering it off. All the time they're starting to realize what you're talking about. Let's talk about why you use stories to capture attention. I think sometimes people go in and just immediately jump into the gospel message and it becomes just straight preaching where they're shaking their finger at people 
and, and, and then it's very easy to lose children. But mm -hmm. why are stories so effective in capturing their attention? I think you actually pull the children in. You know, there's a saying, you first got to win the children to yourself and then win them to Jesus. You, put, you pull them in, but they remember the stories. You know, we've seen the children years later. When we see them, uh, they don't remember our names, which I, I like. They would remember sometimes the song that we played to them, One by Jesus, you're the only one I can live for. And they remember the story. What is important to me also that they remember the principle behind the story. Yeah. But it's amazing how they remember the story. And they remember that story, and I want to connect that story to their day of salvation. So that's the day I said yes to Jesus, is when I heard that story about David and Goliath. And the same way that God helped David, he's now helping me. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think yeah. it's also to explain in their everyday life the Bible, to make it a life how Jesus wants to be their friend, how Jesus can help them, how Jesus can save them. But how is it applicable to their daily life? like he can be your friend he can help you to to slay a giant like like um, david slayed goliath but you can slay a giant of stealing and lying and cheating because god will help you so it just make the biblical application into a practical mm -hmm. everyday application yeah. for them to and understand. And in high schools, of course, we have different stories again. I like to tell the room, the 10 rooms, for instance, in high schools. And you can lift up many others and like um, pornography and all these things that they could struggle with. Yeah. So it just depends. Different schools will do different things. But it's amazing how God is moving. You often see the children crying. You see teachers crying. You see teachers responding. It's really, really amazing. And then you also pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. So we do basic scriptures about the Holy Spirit receiving the power. In schools, we it's not a good thing to maybe use the word baptism because we've had this where they say, you know, don't come and baptize my children into your faith. Uh, but we talk about the power of God. We t and so we can, there's so many the other ways. The Holy Spirit wants to live with you every exactly, day. Exactly, actually. Yes, he yeah. wants to pray right now. help you yes. and comfort you. And, yeah, yeah, I usually explain to you, you know, the choice that you've just made is not a choice that might be easy to live out every day. But the choice is, however, for the rest of your life. And we cannot do it alone. And so therefore, Jesus knew this. So he promised to send us the Holy Spirit to come and to help yeah. us, to give us the power to overcome, to give us the power to be a witness and to be bold. And therefore, when you have the Holy Spirit, you can do all of this. Wow, mm -hmm. that's so beautiful. And I think it's so amazing that you visited almost 8,000 schools. Praise God. Praise, ministered to over 4 million yes. children. Do you know how many ministers never in their lives minister to that praise god yeah. and god's opened the door yeah. for you and you've seen so many children give their lives to jesus what, what does that feel like when you you pray a prayer of salvation with and uh, so many children repeat after you that is amazing and so i make the mistake sometimes i open my eyes myself and i look at the children i look how sincere how serious they are yeah. that really touched my heart in fact i think the same happened with these adventures that we train now they also open their eyes in the middle of the prayer. And that's really when they catch it and catch your heart, that you see how serious they are, how seriously they're praying, how would they believe. Mm -hmm. It is really amazing. But this is highly addictive. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you, if you uh, do this once, it will be hard not to do it again, and mm -hmm. again, and again, and again. Yeah. It is amazing. The children can crawl into your heart faster than I can explain. Yeah. It is really amazing. That's very true. Highly addictive. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well. I love what you do, and Praise I'm so God. excited about the harvest of souls that God has given you. Thank you so much for Thank being you, on the Evangelism Podcast. And I pray Thank that you, your sir. example will inspire many thousands more to go into schools around the world to lead the children to Jesus. Yes. Jesus said, let the little children come yes. up to me. Yeah. And you are fulfilling that scripture. Praise you God. are going and giving the children mm -hmm. an opportunity mm -hmm. to yes. come to Jesus. And it's so beautiful. Thank, thank you, you sir. So much. Thank God you. And we are honored you. that you asked us to be part of this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.